Liza. I'm Jake, and you're watching Horse Rockets, filmed in beautiful Bavaria. This is episode 13, and we called it Off to Camp. In this episode, we're going to talk to you about getting ready for a summer camp, a religious retreat, or a family vacation. If this is your first time visiting Horse Rockets Academy, then we'd like to send a hearty welcome to you. Congratulations on finding the most popular space theme question YouTube video series in the world. We hope this is the show that you're watching as you start off your week, your homeschooling week, or your week at school. Well, we think we've got some things to share that make it worth asking you to subscribe. Don't be intimidated that our show sounds like it's for a niche audience. Eliza's right. Some people are intimidated, but I'm sure you're not one of them. Some people, though, think that our space-themed educational equestrian educational YouTube video series is only enjoyable if they enjoy space, horses, education, and YouTube, and that's totally not the case. Our show is made for people, so if you're a person, you'll like our show. In this episode, we're once again bringing in some awesome guests with whom we share our lives. In this episode, Elijah joins Daniel for the hunt in history, and Mary is joining me for the high five. We've also got Victoria calling in for our candid comments segment, and as always, we're going to start with Rainey's Riddles. After Rainey's Riddles, we got Victoria calling in with candid comment sections. Then Daniel's going to do our hunt into history. That was a little redundant, but eventually we're going to get on to our main segment and our Horse Rockets high five. After that, we're going to present our weekly scorecard. I'm elated and tingle and ecstatic. So, Eliza, what are we waiting for? Just eight little words. Last week it was six. Why is it eight this week? I wanted to make it more awesome. Okay, well, what are they? Time to get this show on the road. Thanks, Eliza. Today's riddle comes from a popsicle stick. What is the snake's favorite subject? Stay tuned for the answer later in the show. Back to you, Eliza. Great riddle, Rainy. He is a rather clever boy, you know. Seems like we have a candid comment from one of our horse rockets friends in the field. Who's this one from? It's from Victoria. Let's watch. My name is Victoria Lavelle Trippiano. I'm calling in from Huntsville, Alabama. And thank you so much, Eliza, for letting me be a part of your candid comments for Horse Rockets. Let me just start with saying I love the name Horse Rockets as I've always ridden horses and I'm coming from the Rocket City. I'm going to talk to you today about two things. The first thing is going to be about volunteering, and the second thing is going to be about staying true to yourself. If I could go back and tell myself when I was your age how to do things differently, I would tell myself to always make sure I was actively volunteering. It, you think that you don't have the time to take out of your schoolwork and all of the activities you have going on to volunteer, but it is so important to actively be volunteering because your life is only going to get busier and it's only going to get harder to be an active volunteer. So that's the first thing. The second thing is about being true to yourself. If something feels like it's not right for you, it probably isn't. There's going to be times when people want to tell you that it is, when you're going to have friends, classmates, professors, coworkers, whatever it is, just make sure you remember to put what feels right to you and what you, feels right to your beliefs before what other people say. Because normally your gut instinct is what is right for you. And that's something I didn't understand when I was younger. So pretty much to wrap it up, if you can remember one thing, you're going to be good. And that is to choose what's right and not what's easy. I hope you'll have a great day, a great episode, and thanks again for letting me be a part of it. Thanks for sending that in, Victoria. That was insightful. Eliza, how would you apply what Victoria shared? I think I'll look for more volunteering opportunities somewhere while I got some time. I also think that you're certainly living her advice to remain true to yourself and your beliefs. Your mom and I are both really proud of you. Thanks, Dad. It's time for a hunt in the history. Thanks, Eliza. Elijah's in the studio once again. Elijah, do you want to start us off this week? 
Sure can. This week, Monday, falls on June 23rd. On this date, in 1868, Christopher Latham Scholes received a patent for an invention he called the typewriter. On June 24th, 1846, the saxophone is patented by Adolf Sax in the Paris, France. Does that mean if I invented an instrument, it would have to be called the Elijah phone? Sounds good to me. I only play the violin, though. Makes me wonder if the inventor of the violin was someone named Lynn. Or if the inventor of the cello was named Lo. Hmm. Well, anyway, back to the past. On June 25th, 1876, Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer suffers a defeat at the Battle of Little Bighorn. That sounds a little indecisive. What do you mean? He was soundly defeated. There's nothing indecisive about that. Not that. The name. Was uh, it a little horn or a big horn? I don't know. But what I do know is that we're getting off topic. You're right. On June 26, 1917, the first U.S. troops arrived in France to fight in the World War I. On June 27, 1905, the sailors of the battleship Potemkin started a mutiny that would become a rallying point among the population. The events were later retold as one of the most influential propaganda films of all time. This week's historical salute goes to Helen Keller. She was the first deafblind person to earn Bachelor of Arts degree. Her hard work is an example to all of us. Helen Adams Keller, this salute is for you. Back to you, Eliza. Thank you, Dana, for this week's Hunted History with Elijah. Right, so Eliza, what is your favorite day of history this week? I've got two guesses. I'm either going to guess that it was Monday with the invention of the saxophone or Tuesday with the invention of the typewriter. I like Tuesday, the invention of the typewriter, because the typewriter also was involved to the keyboards on the computers. Right. Now, our keyboards on our computers use the QWERTY system, which actually didn't come about in the first typewriter. It evolved over time. And it's one of the criticisms of the QWERTY system is that there's only one vowel on the home row, and that's E. So naturally, you have to move your fingers in order to, to type beyond that. But, but we're getting off subject, okay? Because our show today is not about typewriters. It's about heading off to camp. It's summertime, and homeschoolers and non-homeschoolers are preparing for various summer camps, religious retreats, or just vacations with your family. But if you're in Europe, you're planning to go all over the place. Probably. So Eliza has just returned from a week away at a youth retreat and has a few tips to share that can help you prepare for a happier experience. If you're going to a professional camp, take a look at the camp's website to see what they recommend. Preparation list. Right, so a lot of these camps, they really want you to have a good experience, and their reputation depends on it. So they likely have advice on how to have the best experience possible while attending, and they usually post that online. They did when I was there. Okay, so vacations also often come with hidden expenses, though. Not everything's on the websites, right, Liza? Yes. If you've been on a Disney vacation, you know how much stuff costs there. True. If your family is planning their first Disney vacation, you might be planning on being overwhelmed. Right. We've been to Disney World twice now. And if it weren't for the help of friends and family who regularly attend, showing us the ropes, we would have had a much different outcome than the one we did have. Disney, Disney's ability to their own park system outright means that their experience is truly unique and unlike any other. In addition, they often change the way their experience is done. Right. Since the last time we visited, they now have wristbands that enable access to the parks and rides at a much easier pace. For any vacation, we really recommend packing hygiene items and some extra 
over-the-counter medicines. You don't want to get allergies or stomach bug or a headache slowing down your ability to enjoy the time you have away from home. We also recommend having an outlet, not an electrical kind. Sometimes the iPod or iPhone, your own music, right, it can be a way for you to escape. But if electronics aren't allowed on the type of trip that you're talking about having, uh, be sure to have a book handy, something that's familiar and lets you escape, lets you get your escape time during the day. The outdoor provides a lot of great opportunity to test some of the things in school. Maybe you learned about birds and get to do some bird watching and photographing. All right, maybe you learned about calories and want to light flower on fire. It was awesome when we did it. Yeah, it's one of the least scientific ways to learn about calories, but you can see from these photos that we certainly enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. If you learned about Newton's third law and you want to experience, there's a lot of ways to do th this one. But one of our favorite way is a bottle rockets. Right. If you don't get, if you didn't get a chance this year in school to learn about Newton's third law yet, but would like to learn how it applies specifically to bottle rockets and how to build one of your own, click the link here for the Sci Guys on the vi for the Sci Guys' video on the subject. Our final tip is to recommend you to manage your expenses. Expectations. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Keep going. Just because you've been at some place before and have terrific memories of it doesn't mean that you're going to be recreating those same memories of this visit. The people that I shared a car with on the way there, they kept on talking about how the experience was, mm -hmm. but then they talked about how the experience used to be and they compared them. It wasn't that great as it was before. Right, so leave the memories that you cherish from your previous trip, trips as cherished memories and don't try to recreate them. Focus instead on trying to create new memories that you can love just as much. Well, that's all we have for now. Time for the Horse Rockets High Five. With me and Mary. <laughs> Host is joining me again. <laughs> this is the part of the show where we share something that is worthy of the grand status of high five dome. This week's high five goes to Alexander's Greek restaurant. Alexander's Greek restaurant has delicious, authentic food. And the restaurant has a spectacular audience. And the servers speak both English and German, which works for us. And most of the decoration is from Greece. As you can see, we're recording here, and it looks great. Alexander's Greek restaurant, this high five goes to you. Here it is. Now it's time to reveal our curriculum scorecard. Homeschoolers have different interests when they buy a book for their curriculum. They want to know how much prep time it takes before each lesson and how long the book is going to last. Wouldn't it be nice to know ahead of time if the book's religious or secular? Or if the book react, re uh, adapts to different learning styles. We've got scorecards for curriculums on horserockets. Dot com slash scorecards to help answer these questions and others. This week we're pleased to announce the scorecard for Flash Kids' Reading for the Gifted Student, Grade 1. If you got experience with this book, visit us on the scorecard page and you'll find a link to contribute your own feedback. We really whoa, 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 appreciate... Liza, we've got a problem. What? You've been talking too much. Can't you see the person right there just wants the answer to Rainey's riddle? Oh, I am so sorry. Hi there, YouTubers. Have you figured out what the snake's favorite subject is? Maestro, drum roll, please. The answer is history. <laughs> Thank you, as always. If you've got a riddle to share, put it in the comments below. While we're at the end of the show, we hope to mention something on the show you think is worthy of sharing with your friends and family. If we did, 
please use the share and like buttons on YouTube or wherever you find this video. If not, please use the comment section and tell us how we can get better. We welcome your feedback. How do we exit? Same way it started. Michael, please take us away. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. Thanks for watching our show. Don't forget to be your best. Well, take time, do what you're gonna.